was lightened with his glory and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying Babylon the great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird white Christianity is the whore that sits upon many waters. No, 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 don't, don't, don't close me down. Because they gonna have to do something to get to heaven. And what they gotta do to get to heaven, I'm going right back to Genesis and tell you what white Christians gotta do. You think by getting to heaven, you should back a false Israel. You think that if you back the Zionists in a false Israel that you're going to be blessed. Well, I'm going here to tell you, Mr. Bush, and I'm here to tell the white Christian right, and I'm here to tell the house of Israel, hear ye the word of the living God. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. And a government, not Washington, not democracy, but a government shall be upon his shoulders. And he shall be called. Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, and of the increase of his government of peace, there shall be no end. Now let's break it down and we can go home. My dear family, the four kingdoms are Great Britain, silver, gold, America, brass. These four kingdoms represent the standard of wealth in the world. The legs of iron, the fourth kingdom, really represents America. She's very strong. She supports gold, silver, and brass. But in 1971, Nixon took America off of the gold standard, and they started printing what is called fiat money meaning it's money that's not backed by nothing of value. And that dollar bill is coming down real fast. Listen good now, because you are in now a house that is falling. Open, 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 open your eyes. President Bush is disintegrating right in front of the world. He is bringing America to ruin and enemies are rising for America all over the world because of the policies of the neoconservatives who rule Bush. Bush is not the power, he's the actor. But there's a power behind that throne that I want to get to today. I'm almost there. See, Babylon 
The nations in the past became wealthy because of their trade with her. It's the dollar that has been the force in the world, but it's backed by nothing but <coughs> America's power and her military might. <clears throat> but look at what's happening to the country. Look at your clothes. Forty years ago, everything we had on was made in America, which meant that poor workers could find something to do in a factory. But today, the industrial base of America is gone to cheap labor markets abroad. Now, those of you who are well-educated, I, I want to talk to you as a father over the house. You see, most of us that make advancements, let me take this out and walk a little. We, we make advancements because we know how to fit in. See, the people that are in Cook County Jail, they ain't the ones that fit in. The people that's out there with heroin, nodding, they don't fit in. But the educational system of America was fashioned by industrialists and rich people to keep the masses, listen to me good now, so-called educated to fit in. Fit into what? Their scheme in a socio-political economic order that the industrialists, bankers, and rich people control. And of course, if you fit in, you help them control your dumb brothers and sisters. So they give our doctorate degree, oh, doctor so so, doctor this, doctor that, doctor. And we so crazy, we, we love it. Yeah, you know who I am? I'm doctor. Proud of our training. It don't mean you're dumb. You're knowledgeable to fit in. A system that is not good for you or your people, but they make it good for you. So you live in the suburbs. You drive nice cars. You bling bling in another way. But wherever you are, you don't feel good. You moved into a white neighborhood and they threw dog feces at your doorstep knock your windows out. Nigga go home, nigga this, nigga that. But after a while, you became socially acceptable. You could go to the pool with, with the children of your peers, so you thought. You drive up in your Mercedes Benz, your BMW, your, your Lexus, your SUV. But there's something missing in that picture. Because no matter what you have, you're still black. I was with Muhammad Ali one day. He came to my home, the great Muhammad Ali. May Allah be pleased and with that wonderful brother of ours. But when I came to greet him and shake his hands, he said, I'm still a nigger, brother. And I was shocked. I said, oh, no, Muhammad. You're not no nigger. He said, I'm, I'm still a nigger, brother. And it took me six months, I'm a slow learner, you know, to figure out what Muhammad was saying. 
I'm on a Wheaties box, but I'm still a nigger. They call me and send me all over the world to do the business of white America, but I'm still a nigger. In other words, no matter how much money I have, how much fame I have, to them, I'm still a nigger. Michael Jackson. You know, Michael is a beautiful brother on a journey. See, the journey of black people is to be great and mix with white people so that you think you have arrived. So when we're singing in the Chitlin circuit, nobody come to see us but our folk. I love you, baby. <laughs> and you, my special girl. And all in the Chitlin circuit say, Sing that song, baby! And then one day white folks come in the Chitlin circuit and hear you. I think you got something. Come on out from among the Chitlins. I'm gonna dress you up and put strings behind you. At last, my love has come along. My lonely days are over Cause you are mine at last Now you move it on up now You done come out of the chitlin circuit And you a crossover artist now More money White manager White agent, white uh, lawyer, white accountant, got money, everybody talking about you. Where's your wife? That, that black woman that you you was with when I saw you in the chitlin circuit. Where, 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 where's your black husband? Well, you see, when they took me out and sort of took me up, they surrounded me with people that wasn't my own. And, and I didn't, it seemed like I was falling in love. And so I have me a white wife now, and she's the beneficiary in my will. I have a white manager, and I died broke. But I was famous. My friend from The Temptations, David Ruffin, he called my office one day and he said, Minister, I need help. He said, I'm out here in Albuquerque, New Mexico with some Arab Muslims. They ain't your kind of Muslim. You're damn right. They pay me sometimes in drugs and sometimes they give me money, but I want to get out of this, minister. I said, brother, I'm on my way overseas. I'll be back, God willing, in two weeks. And when I get back, I'll give you a call and we'll see what we can do. I got back in two weeks. The number that he gave me had changed and I never got in touch with my brother. The next thing I heard, he had come back from London with 
uh, a money belt with $40,000 in it and he went to a crack house and he OD'd and they took him in front of Harlem Hospital and dumped him and when they came out and picked him up off the ground they didn't know that it was David Ruffin of the Temptations and he died but his lawyer called me black man and said David wanted you to say his eulogy so I went to Detroit and there was Aretha Franklin the goddess Lord have mercy if there ever was a woman that could sing there was Stevie Wonder the God there were the residue of the temptations and the place was crowded. And there was my brother in the casket with his famous glasses on. And out of the audience came the temptations to sing their hit song. My girl, talking about my girl. The audience forgot they were in a funeral. They started booking. I had to cuss them people out. <laughs> what is my point? You a crossover Negro, football player, basketball player, baseball player, tennis player, crossover. And the minute you cross over, you leave your people. And the next thing we know, you got a white wife, you got a white husband, you got a white manager, you got a white agent, but you still believe in your people, but somebody else is written in the will. And like Malcolm said, I've been tricked. I've been bad and boozled. I've been took. I've been had. And you've been took. You are bamboozled people. You still believe in the government line. And you keep sentencing each generation of black people to struggle with the enemy of your people because as Al Sharpton said, we were dealing with Jim Crow yesterday, but we're dealing with Jim Crow Esquire today. Well, you're right, Al. Well, if we're dealing with Jim Crow Esquire today, why are you gonna keep telling black people that Jim Crow Esquire's child is gonna do better than Jim Crow Esquire or Jim Crow did? These are the same people with the same mind and the same spirit. And you got to wake up and recognize that not one more generation of our people should be sentenced to that crap. Katrina showed us the image had some toes, 10 of them. Iron, strong. But potter's clay, uh, which was broken. That's America. That's you and white people. She's strong, but she's trying to keep you with her. You trying to stay with her? But it's two Americas. You say it all the time. Two Americas, one black, one white. One rich, one poor. Separate and unequal. That is the weakness of America. And because you are the Achilles heel of America, and they have nothing more for you to do, and they know your future, their aim is to take you completely out 
and to take you down with them. Now watch how this works. Birth control pill. Not for white women, but for black, Hispanic, and Native American women, you take the pill. Because we don't want no more blackies, no more brownies, no more reddies, only whiteies. So we're going to give them a fertile, fertilizing pill that they can have litters while you, I got you. We used to take cleansing after the menses with white vinegar. Non-caustic cleaners. But now they've made a vaginal chemical with, with sweetness in it. Smells sweet. Be clean and you smell sweet. But now you're using this ungodly chemical that's weakening the walls of your uterus so whenever you want to have a baby your uterus is too weak to hold it so you're having miscarriages this demon is working 40 years ago cancer was a white man's disease today you lead we lead in every the degree of cancer, if it's prostate cancer, if it's ovarian cancer, if it's breast cancer, if it's liver cancer, if it's pancreatic cancer, it's you that's at the top of the list. You at the top of the list of diabetes. You at the top of the list of heart failure. You at the top of the list of stress and you're dying because they're killing you scientifically and you can't see it. They've planned your death. They move you out in the suburbs and you think you're moving on up, but your house is near a toxic waste dump. You're drinking water that's filled with chemicals that are carcinogens that are killing you. This is not an accident. This is by design. When will you wake up? Katrina should tell you, they don't care nothing about you. But God loves you. And so he's calling you out. Look at the scripture. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven. Come out of her. And I saw a stone hewn out of a mountain without hands. Oh, man. How can you take a stone out of a mountain without hands? When Master Farad Muhammad came among us, he never used hands. He used his mouth and a word. And the book says, when I send my word out, it will not come back to me void. It will accomplish the thing. Where to I have sent it? Well, what did you send it to do? I sent it to cut a stone out of the mountain. I sent it to break my people free from their 400-year-old tormentor. And when that stone starts moving it's a kingdom of peace that's why it's called the nation of islam right. it's a nation of people who submit their will to do the will of god and carry no weapons and whatever we've accomplished it was not accomplished by violence we are a people of peace. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Here's the problem. The feet. Iron mixed with potter's clay. Woo. Woo. If it's potter's clay, 
is ready to be shaped. But it's got to be separated from the iron. See, this is what's wrong with you. You don't think you can live without white people. But you lived trillions of years before they ever came to the earth without them. And you can live an eternity without them if they don't accept righteousness. Now, the stone is hewn out of the mountain without hands. The stone hits at the weak spot. What's the weak spot of an empire built on slaves? What was the weakness of the fourth kingdom, Rome? It was the slaves in Rome. So when Jesus began preaching, and the book said the poor heard his voice gladly, the enemy said, we got to get rid of Jesus. Because if we don't get rid of him, the toes will crumble, the legs will fall, and our gold, our silver, and our brass will be broken into pieces. Jesus became hated because he was the advocate for the poor. Why did they kill Martin King? He was an advocate for the poor. Why must Malcolm be killed? He's an advocate for the poor. Why was Medgar Evers killed? He was an advocate for the poor. Why was Nate, Nat Turner brutalized? Because he was an advocate for the slave. And anybody that advocates for you will either be assassinated, put in prison, being lied upon, falsely talked about, and you suck it up. Paul Robeson was our friend. We turned on him. W.E.B. Du Bois was our friend. We turned on him. Martin Luther King was our friend. We turned on him. Malcolm and Elijah were our friends. We turned on both of them. Every friend that we have ever had that white folk didn't like, they made us turn on them. Adam Clayton Powell was a friend of ours, but we turned on him. And we looking now to see who can we turn on now. Well, here's Malik Zulu Shabazz. It's my brother, student of my brother, Khalid Abdul Muhammad. Now they don't like him because he's an advocate for the poor. Conrad Worrell, they don't like him. He's an advocate for the poor. Oh, there's my friend back there, Cliff Kelly, the bold, bold teacher on the radio. They don't like him, because he sure tells the truth and advocate for the poor. Or they don't like you either, attorney. Lou Myers, you are advocate for the poor, a defender of the poor. Whoever will defend the poor, the enemy does not like. Well, we're at the end now. America is falling. Watch this. Seven hills, the whore that sat upon many waters, a woman sitting upon a beast. It represents a false church sitting on a, upon a, a, a powerful government that is supporting this false church spreading the filth of her abominations all over the world. Look at the filth that's going on in America as we speak. And look at how she's spreading that filth all over the world. You beautiful women. 
Look at how he's undressing you. And look at how you are willing to be undressed. You don't even think it strange anymore because you've lost your shyness. Even a horse or a dog will hide its nudist parts with a tail. But not you. Your tail is out. And it ain't the tail of two cities. You're a beautiful woman. Your beauty is unmatched anywhere on our planet. But he's turning you into a cheap kind of woman who wants to show men what you know men are attracted to. Pardon me, boobs and butt. So you are now bootylicious. And you don't care if you're seen on television with a thong. You don't have no shame, no shyness. So he's using you to drag your man down. Because where there are no decent women, there are no decent men. For the woman is the mother of civilization, and she, if she's virtuous, she is more precious than gold and silver. Are you following me? Yes, sir. And so, here we are. Who is this Satan that got this world upside down? You can't get to Satan because he's so high up. Right. He keeps you fighting the demons that he makes. And when you get too close, he throw a demon at you. But he remains behind the curtain. Not today, baby. We're going to call Satan out today. Because the war is on. It ain't about white and black. It's about God and Satan. It ain't about black and white. It's about wrong and right. And if you're willing to do right, no matter what your color is, you can be a part of the kingdom of God. But every white man or woman and every black man and woman before you can become a part of God's kingdom, you have to renounce Satan and all his works. And you can't be Satan's work and use your mouth to renounce him and stay in the shape that Satan shaped you in. I'm almost finished. Come on. Paul says in the book of Romans, I'm sorry, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, that day shall not come except there be a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. A falling away is going on as we speak. In the church, there's a falling away. In the mosque, there's a falling away. Yeah. Among people who love righteousness, there's a falling away because Satan is working so hard on us that we are beginning to fall away from sound doctrine. We're beginning right. to heap to ourselves teachers that tickle our ears. Amen. Oh, 
And that's because the man of sin, not the spirit of sin. The book says a man of sin. All right, let's find the man. In the book of Revelations, second chapter, I should have finished a long time ago because I know your patience is not there. Listen, listen to these words. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. It's talking to you. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now some of you are dumb enough to think that I'm anti-Semitic. I didn't write that scripture. But I doggone sure I'm going to interpret it for you. Now a synagogue doesn't just mean that in it are people who claim to be Jews. But it is a house where people of similar mind and spirit are gathered. But it's called a synagogue. Now I don't want you to hear me. And if any of you have to answer for what I say now, and you punk out, then I'm going to tell you where you are in the book in a second from now. With God's help. See, there are people that claim they are Jews but they're not Jews. You can't be a Jew and not love the law of God given by Moses and the prophets. Because a Jew is a special person with a covenant relationship with God. Jew is not a nationality, it is a state of being in a covenant relationship with God based on obedience to the laws, statutes, and commandments of God. There's a lot of false Christians in here. And there's a lot of false Muslims. See, everybody that say, Lord, Lord, you know, they ain't with him. The Bible say you, you praise me with your lips, but your hearts are far removed from me. If you are a true Christian, you're fighting to be like the disciples of Christ who have disciplined yourself to the life that Jesus lived and taught. If you are a Jew, you are a Jew because you have a special relationship with God based upon your obedience to his laws. And if we are Muslims, it is because we have surrendered our will to do the will of God. And all of us are in a struggle. Muslims are in a struggle to submit. That's right, that's right. Christians are in a struggle to discipline themselves to the way of Jesus Christ. And Jews have that same struggle. But there are Jews that ain't struggling at all. That's right. That's right. These are the Hollywood Jews right. who say they are Jews, but they are not. No, sir. And until the true Jew points the finger at the false Jew. The false Jew will make the true Jew look bad. Now I want you to hear me. Don't confuse what I'm saying. Whenever there's a bad Negro, which is what Zulu is, you know, Shabazz. He's a bad Negro. 
And when you find a bad Negro, they always try to find a good Negro to condemn the bad Negro. Well, a good Negro is one that's good for them. The bad Negro is the one that it ain't good for them. So all you good Negroes, all you good Negroes in the morning, they may call you and ask you to condemn Farrakhan. I don't mind seeing you on television. I was there, and it was the most hateful speech I've ever heard in my life. That man is a hater if I've ever heard one. I say, that's a good one, all right. These false Jews, I'm almost there, just back, a couple, 10 more minutes. These false Jews promote the filth of Hollywood that is seeding the American people and the people of the world and bringing you down in moral strength and making evil fair-seeming. It's the wicked Jews, the false Jews, that are promoting lesbianism, homosexuality. It's wicked Jews, false Jews, that make it a crime for you to preach the word of God. Then they call you homophobic. Right. You're not homophobic if you say that Jesus said no effeminate person will enter the kingdom of God. We say it out of love, but it's the false Jew. And 